the letter to the Hebrews. Day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. And since that time, he awaits for his enemies to be made his footstool. For by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. The Holy Gospel also testify to us about this. First, he says, this is the covenant I will make with them after that time, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their heart and I will write them on their minds. Then he adds, their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. And where these have been forgiven, sacrifice for sin is no longer necessary. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain that is his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. The word of the Lord. When I was, uh, when I was a young boy, probably starting about seven or eight years old and then going up until I left high school, my parents always had a big family gathering on Christmas Eve. My dad had two brothers and two sisters and they had a lot of children. And so I had lots of cousins, plus a couple of uncles and a couple of aunts. And my mother had a lot of cousins. And so they decided that they wanted to make sure that the family all got together every year. Um, and I think they did it a lot for us so that we would have this relationship to an extended family. But this party was something else. Mom and dad put it all together. And as a young child, and even as I grew up, I, I watched the way this happened. And of course, I got roped into helping out too. But all the things they did to prepare for this party, it was just amazing. Uh, they had such dedication for this, and, and nobody else in the family would do it. They were the ones that did this party every year. And so my, my dad, I mean, I remember this like it was yesterday, my dad would make jalapeno pie. Oh gosh, it was really great. You know, all that cheese, oh, it was wonderful. Cheese and eggs and jalapenos. And I was in charge of the uh, eggnog. And uh, we would get this big punch bowl and put a big chunk of ice cream in it. And then lots of whiskey and lots of eggnog. It was, a, it was a great party, let me tell you. Uh, smoked oysters, all these little things I remember them doing. Uh, but then Christmas Eve would come, and about six o'clock the doorbell would start ringing, and here would come aunts, uncles, cousins, on both sides of the family. We would have 30 people in the house, and it was, it was just a, a glorious time. You know, all this preparation mom and dad did every year for this party. And uh, I guess when I went off to college, that was when they stopped having it. Uh, but it was just, it was a great time. And I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, this reading we have today from uh, the book of Hebrews. Remember that the book of Hebrews, as much as we can tell, was written to Jewish Christians in Jerusalem who were 
being pulled away from the Christian faith, thinking that people thinking that they needed to be good Jews. And, and this letter was written to try to encourage them and remind them how important what Jesus did for them was. So with that in mind, these people that were being, uh, that this letter was written to knew, knew about temple worship. They understood that. They understood that the temple consisted of uh, one big space like this, but then in the back of it, there was a place called the Holy of Holies. Like if you can imagine a huge curtain across here and you would not be allowed to go back behind that curtain. It was a big curtain of one piece, very heavy. And the only person who could go back behind that was the high priest. And he only did that once a year. He went behind the curtain and he sprinkled blood of the sacrifice around the Ark of the Covenant. And he did that to take away the sins of the people. He had to do that every year to, to make sure that the people's sins were forgiven. But then we read the gospel stories, and especially the story from Matthew, where when Jesus died on the cross, that huge curtain was split from the top to the bottom. And through that sacrifice of Jesus now, we are allowed to go in to that Holy of Holies because within there, within there, the Jewish people understood that the presence of God resided. And so now through the death and resurrection of Jesus, we can go through that curtain and approach God. We have that ability now to know that we are cleansed from our sins and that Jesus' blood has cleansed us. Instead of a blood of a yearly sacrifice having to do it, it was now once and for all done for us. What's happened now is Jesus has prepared everything for us. We are now free from sin. We are able to approach God we are able to come to that great banquet that he holds for us. We are able to come to that altar and to, to, to take the bread and the wine. It's, G, Jesus is now saying, come, join me. This is the good news that all of us have to remember. Everything has been prepared for us. Everything has been prepared for us. To, to join him, invited to the party, uh, come and break the bread and drink the wine is what he's asking us now. And that's what the end of this lesson is telling us, to do that, to come and join him and to bring someone with us. And don't forget that there is great joy in this gathering that we have. Amen. <laughs>